In humans, sex depends on whether you have an X and a Y chromosome. However, in Drosophila, something far more interesting happens. In Drosophila, sex determination depends on the ratio of autosomes, or non-sex chromosomes, to the number of X-sex chromosomes. Usually, there are two autosomes, though this can vary. The Y chromosome is useless apart from making male flies fertile. Now, how would you get a male versus a female? If you have a ratio of one X chromosome for every two autosomes, you produce a male. If you have an equal number of X chromosomes versus autosomes, then you'll get a female fruit fly. If your ratio is less than one X chromosome per two autosomes, you get a super male, basically a fly with exaggerated male characteristics. More than one X chromosome per autosome will give you a super female, or a fly with exaggerated female characteristics. Let's try some examples. And for simplicity's sake, for now let's assume that you have two autosomes for each of the following flies. How about XX? Ratio is one to one, so female. XXY? Remember, the Y chromosome is useless. Again, female. XY? One X per two autosomes. Male. XYY? You can add a hundred more Ys. Who cares? Male. How about OY? Yikes. See, the X is actually important. It encodes genes which both males and females need in order to survive. This embryo is dead. How about XO? Well, we've got the important part. There's an X chromosome. So we have a nice happy male, right? Well, except he's infertile, and so he's sad. What if you have three autosomes, or four, or whatever number? Again, just figure out the ratio between X chromosomes and autosomes. Like if you have six X chromosomes and six autosomes, you have a female. Six autosomes and three X chromosomes, you have a male. There are three genes involved in Drosophila sex determination. The three genes form a pathway, and it's important to remember their function. The first is sex lethal, and this is a splicing repressor. Next, you have transformer, which activates splicing. Lastly, there's double sex, which is the regulator of sex gene expression. The default pathway for Drosophila is to become male, and this is a simpler pathway, so let's try to understand it first. So here we have three genes, sex lethal, transformer, and double sex. And on the right, I will show the mRNAs, which are to be spliced. Now, the reason for male development is that there is no regulated splicing for any of the three transcripts. It's very important to take note that this does not mean that there is no splicing. It just means that there are no splicing activators or repressors floating around to affect whether splicing occurs or not at any particular splice site. Let's look at sex lethal first. Remember, mRNA is translated by ribosomes 5' to 3'. The green portion of this mRNA is the bit that will either be found in male or female fruit flies, but not in both. And here are the splice sites. The red portions are introns. Then there's transformer. Again, here are the splice sites. And lastly, double sex. The first two mRNAs produce non-functional proteins. The double sex mRNA is interesting, however. The middle two splice sites require activation in order for the middle section to get spliced, and hence not get spliced out. Since the male has no regulated splicing, and these two cuts don't occur, this whole portion of mRNA gets sloppily cut out by the ruthless spliceosome, disregarding the middle portion. So, a double sex protein gets produced. This is the N-terminus and the C-terminus. Starting at the N-terminus, you have a section 400 amino acids long, which is the same in the male and in the female. However, at the C-terminus, you will find 150 male-specific amino acids. These male-specific amino acids turn off female differentiation genes, and so you get a male fruit fly. On to a more fascinating situation. How do female fruit flies come about? I bet you've already guessed. In females, all three genes have regulated splice sites. This regulation is triggered by the one-to-one -one ratio of X chromosomes to autosomes, which temporarily activates a promoter in the sex lethal gene, which produces a special kind of sex lethal mRNA, which produces functional sex lethal protein. Aha! Now, remember that the sex lethal protein is a splicing repressor? Well, it binds the splice sites in the sex lethal mRNAs and inactivates them. As a result, this entire region gets spliced out, the ribosome then does its work, and voila, we have a functional sex-lethal protein. This sex-lethal protein can go back and keep repressing sex-lethal mRNA splice sites. It can also repress splice sites in transformer mRNAs. 
and hence, we have the following region spliced out, resulting in a functional transformer protein being produced. This transformer protein acts on the double sex mRNA in concert with a second protein called transformer 2. Transformer 2 is a constitutively produced protein, meaning that it is always being translated and is always around. Together, these two transformer buddies activate splicing. Also, notice that there was a little green region at the 3' end of the double sex mRNA. This portion is present in males, but is absent in female mRNA. Anyway, so a protein gets produced from the double sex mRNA, and again, there is a 400 amino acid portion from the N-terminus, which is identical in male and female fruit flies. The C-terminus, however, has a 30 amino acid portion, which is particular to the female Drosophila. This portion represses male differentiation genes, and so a female is born into the world.